Hello. Once again, so nice to be with you. Now, this particular time we're preparing for the 23rd Sunday in Ordinary Time, the readings for September the 5th. And this particular gospel for September the 5th is Luke chapter 14, verses 25 to 33. First of all, to whom is he speaking? It says in the scriptures, in this particular gospel, great crowds were traveling with Jesus, and he turned and addressed them. He's talking to the great crowds then and through all the centuries afterwards. That means us. Secondly, what is he trying to say? Three times... He says, if you don't do this particular thing or do this particular thing, he or whoever cannot be my disciple. Cannot be my disciple. Fascinating. He's saying that in order to be my disciple, you must do this particular, this particular thing I am telling you. What's going on here? He is telling the crowds what's necessary to be his, to be a Christian, to be a Catholic. If anyone, now to quote the scripture here, if anyone comes after me without hating his father and mother, wife and children, brothers and sisters, even his own life, he cannot be my disciple. He says something of the same thing in John's Gospel. He who loves his life loses it. He who hates his life in this world shall keep it eternally. The word hate, isn't that a strange word for Jesus to use? Oh my! hate. Does it truly mean what it sounds like? Taking a look at some other scriptures to get a, a better sense of what's going on. In Matthew chapter 5 verse 43, Jesus said, You have heard it was said, You shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say to you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you that you may be called the children of your heavenly Father. So be perfect, just as your heavenly Father is perfect. Here, it's quite clear that to be children of God the Father, we must be people who love and love everyone, even those who do not love us. So the question comes up, how can he say we must hate? And in another scripture, in John's first letter, his epistle, chapter 14, verse 19, he writes, John writes, We love because he first loved us. Or continuing on, verse 20, If anyone says, I love God, but hates his brother, he is a liar. Verse 21, this is the commandment we have from him. Whoever loves God must also love his brother. Oh my. Now clearly he's saying God's commandment is we are to love God. And the way we show it is by loving our neighbor. One of the ways we show it anyhow. What does hate mean? I think what it means is if we love out of just simply a natural, a human motivation, with God having no part in that love, then that's unacceptable. We can't love that way. So in our growth as Christians, we have to leave behind the natural, the human motivations. And to take on 
a divine, a God-centered, a supernatural motivation, which is to love because we are first loved by God, bring God's love to others. Loving God first, finding our love in God, that's what's needed. In Matthew chapter 10, verse 37, he says, He who loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And he who loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. God first. God always first. We love because he first loved us. We first of all must learn to be loved by God. And then in turn, bring his love to one another. From my point of view, the principle is that we are to live now as we will live in heaven. And that our life experience should be a constant growth process in learning how to live in heaven. We start that process. We work at it here on earth. The way we will love in heaven is because we are loved. We love one another because God loves all of us. And we love each other. We love what the ones who God loves. Even ourselves. We only love ourselves because God loves us. Thank you very much. So very good to be with you.